Yo, what's up guys? It's NLW here back again with another video. Today, going to be talking through my thoughts on Elimination Chamber 2021. A lot of shocking things happened on this show and I'm going to go through it match by match. But before I do, make sure you like the video, comment below also what you thought of Elimination Chamber and make sure you subscribe. Thank you for 700 subscribers. Let's try and get to a thousand soon. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the opening of the show and we start with the first Elimination Chamber match. The winner will face the Universal Champion Roman Reigns immediately after. So we got Cesaro and Daniel Bryan starting this off. They've had some great matches on SmackDown and they start it off very well. Some good wrestling exchanges. That's until Baron Corbin comes in. He slows down the pace and it's quite boring from here on in. I'm not really digging it. And again, with, with a lack of crowd, it seems like the excitement and the pops, they're gone. So it kind of drains the match of its energy a little bit. Although I must admit, I did laugh at Sami Zayn going, not me, not me, not me, trying not to get in. But he is number four to get into the action. He attacks Baron Corbin. He goes to the top of a pod trying to escape Cesaro. However, Cesaro holding on to the top of the roof does a pull up and then punches or I should say kicks Sami Zayn down. That was a cool spot. Eventually, Sharpshooter's locked in and Corbin is thankfully eliminated. And this is where the pace of the match really picks up in my view and it gets a lot better. Kevin Owens is the next one in. Him and Zayn, it looks like they're going to team up, but Zayn, he's just trying to weasel his way into a friendship. Instead, he gets battered and then it's a finisher fest. Each man hits their move and, you know, we've got 20 minutes in. At last, the match is picking up. There's a moonsault off of the pod from Kevin Owens. That was spectacular. Zayn is stunned and he's eliminated. In fact, I think he hit a halluva kick onto Kevin Owens and he just no-sold it. So, again, there's the conspiracy. But you got Jey Uso. He's the last man in and he closes in the door on Kevin Owens' arm. And that looked gross. Eliminated after a splash. Quite shocking, actually. And again, some cage swings by Cesaro. And Cesaro is eliminated by Jey Uso. He's a house of fire. He goes to the top of the pod to try and hit a big-time splash. But Daniel Bryan moves and then eventually hits the running knees and pins Jey Uso. Daniel Bryan is the winner of the Elimination Chamber match. I have to say, it was very boring to me at the start. But it definitely picked up towards the end with the exchanges between Cesaro and Daniel. Daniel Bryan, of course, Jey Uso. So I'll give them credit. It was 20 minutes of nothing, but the eventual finish was more than enough to satisfy me. And then you've got the Universal title match immediately after. Roman Reigns comes in and beats up Daniel Bryan. He hits a spear. He wins. Nothing much to say about this. It's more of an angle, although I have to say it made the previous Elimination Chamber look totally redundant. I mean, you got Daniel Bryan, fight all these odds, and then he just gets crushed by Reigns. I get that that's the story they're going for, but it kind of took me out of that Elimination Chamber because you knew he wasn't going to win the title afterwards. So it was ultimately kind of pointless. Then though, the real shocker, Edge comes down, spears Roman Reigns, points to the WrestleMania sign as everyone does, and then the pyro goes off. So it's all but confirmed now that Edge versus Reigns is happening at WrestleMania. And I have to say I'm happy about that, although it makes the outcome of the Fastlane Universal title match, if there is one, a little bit more obvious. So you've got Daniel Bryan, I assume he's going to face Roman Reigns at Fastlane, but we'll have to wait and see. Nevertheless, solid match, solid angle. Got to give it a thumbs up. Next up, we have the United States Championship on the line in a triple threat match. It is Riddle and John Morrison now, who is replacing an injured Keith Lee, going up against Bobby Lashley. There's a lot of exchanges early on. It looks like Morrison and Lashley are trying to gang up on Matt Riddle, and but Lashley is just powering the both of them. There's a floating bro to the outside and a corkscrew from Morrison. He works very well. I want to see more of him in a singles capacity. You've got a final flash knee to Bobby Morrison with a starship pain, but he still kicks out. MVP gets the crutch stolen from him by Riddle and Riddle uses it on Lashley. Riddle then pins John Morrison and Matt Riddle is the new United States Champion. Have to say I'm happy with the outcome. It would have been more cathartic to see Riddle pin Lashley, but I get that they're probably going to have Lashley looking strong heading into a feud with McIntyre, it looks like. But I'll get to that later. Hopefully, though, we see Lee versus Riddle at Mania or maybe even Lashley. Who knows at this point? It's a shame that Keith Lee was pulled from the match, but they did what they could and I thought it was a good solid match. But what wasn't was the next one, and it was the women's tag team title match. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler defending against Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Really a nothing match, and Nia has go-away heat with me right now. She's slow, her movements are uncomfortable. I swear she used to be better, at least okay, in the ring a few years ago. So there is a cool spot. Bianca catches Sasha, shows off her power, and Baszler as well. I just see her, and I think she could be showing much better things right now. I feel like this tag team's really ruined her, and nothing really happens. You've got a frog splash and a kick out, a sloppy-looking Meteora, the KOD, but Jax 
pulls out Belair, who was obviously trying to get into position. I don't know, something wasn't clicking with this match. Reginald comes out, bank statement, but again, Nia just hits the Samoan drop on Sasha and pins the champion. Like, I don't know, I guess uh, it's a thumbs down. They didn't mesh well together as a team. The chemistry was all over the place. I did not like this match. I think the women's tag team titles are completely useless. And again, don't like Nia Jax. Shayna Baszler as well is kind of off-putting for me at the moment. I personally would have liked to have seen Bianca and Sasha try and be reluctant tag partners a la, uh, you know, John Cena and Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania 23 a couple years ago, but again, just kind of boring to me. The worst match on the show. And now we come on to the main event, the WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton start. Nothing really happens early on, it's just Orton battering Hardy. It felt really short though before Drew McIntyre comes in and just obliterates the competition, throwing people around with suplexes. Suplex on the floor and throws Jeff into the pod. Then we got Kofi comes in and shockingly enough, Kofi Kingston actually eliminates Randy Orton with a roll up. Absolutely unbelievable. Was not expecting that. I was expecting something to happen with The Fiend, but again, RKO to everyone. Orton is frustrated. Omos rips the pod open from the outside, allows AJ Styles to run around the chamber, come back in and try and take advantage, but he can't. And then Omos is ejected from ringside. Got a cool monkey flip to the cage by Kofi. AJ's taking some big bumps. I love the selling of these guys as Drew's dominating. And then you see Sheamus in the pod. He's looking intense snarling at the glass and he is the last one in he comes in big fight with drew mcintyre kofi then dives onto a bunch of guys on the outside he is definitely the star of this match got a big tower of doom spot and then kofi wipes them all out sheamus with a bro kick to kofi which eliminates him jeff and i feel like he's had literally no offense until this point in the match where he hits a twist of fate on everyone teases a swanton from the top of the pod but instead hits a whisper on the wind to the outside hits a swanton onto aj but gets bro kicked for his troubles and sheamus is the mvp of this match so far that is until he hits a bro kick on drew and then aj styles with a phenomenal forearm eliminates sheamus could aj styles do it he goes for another phenomenal forearm springboard right into a claymore a very good ending to a pretty good match too in my opinion i'd say this was better than the first chamber just because the stakes were higher and you knew that it was more important because it was for the wwe championship and perhaps a little bit more unpredictable as well and again it it kind of felt tame. The Elimination Chamber structure itself has been neutered and watered down quite a lot in recent years, but I'd say this is my favourite match of the night personally. An enjoyable match, but we're not done with the night because Lashley comes out and attacks Drew McIntyre, and I'm thinking, oh, they're going to set up a match for Fastlane, are they? No! Miz runs down to the ring, cashes in money in the bank, and the Miz somehow, someway, is your new WWE Champion. He holds the championship high as we fade to black. Quite a shocking ending. I'm in two minds about this. On one hand, I don't want to see The Miz as WWE Champion in 2021. But on the other hand, I can understand it makes for a more unpredictable title scene heading into WrestleMania. So for that reason, I think it's a good idea. You keep things mixed up. I would hope that Drew wins the title back before Mania or maybe at Mania. Who knows? And you've got the involvement of Bad Bunny as well. So I understand that they're trying to get the WWE Championship into the mainstream, have something with Bad Bunny and really hype that match for Mania. So we'll see what happens with that. So I kind of get from a mainstream exposure perspective why they'd have The Miz as the champion. But again, like, I really hope that he drops it soon, to be honest. And that's all I have to say about it. I'm not the massive Miz fan that a lot of people seem to be online. But again, I can rate the guy. He's pretty good on the mic. And his matches in ring, they vary from good to pretty decent. I mean, we've seen he can put it on. And especially as the WWE champion now, I think he's better than he was 10 years ago. So... You know what? We'll see. I'll, I won't crap all over it right now. We'll see what happens. I like unpredictability going into WrestleMania, so I'd say thumbs up. So overall, I have to say it's a solid show. Immediately off the bat, watching this and seeing that it was only two and a half hours made me very, very happy. And when you skip all the entrances and stuff, it's only like an hour and a half to watch through. So again, got to give that a thumbs up. The chamber matches, they're a bit tame, but again, it's an environment that has been used so much and it's difficult to kind of innovate inside. I think the first chamber, whilst it was good, the stakes were low, so it kind of hampered my investment in the match. You knew that Brian was going to lose immediately after and then have Edge overshadow Brian's victory. So I didn't really appreciate that, although I am happy that, to see that Edge is going to face Reigns at Mania, it seems. Although I would have liked to have Brian's chamber win mean a little bit more. Again, the women's tag team title was absolutely terrible. And the United States title triple threat, that was decent for what it was. The main event, I thought, felt like a really big time main event. So the WWE Championship on the line, it was a good match. It was good to see Drew main eventing for once, although he did lose it to The Miz. And the cash-in, I'm in two minds about it. I'm not a massive fan of The Miz being the WWE Champion. I think it's stale. We've been there before. But again, if you want to get publicity give the rub to Priest and Bad Bunny, then by all means do that. I hope that Drew wins the title back either now or at WrestleMania. I'm not sure, but I suppose you've got to move the title on at some point. So 
uh, overall, an okay show. It was watchable. Again, short, to the point. I can't say it made me interested in the next pay-per-view, but certainly looking forward to seeing what they pull out going into WrestleMania. Can't be that negative after all. It was it was an Elimination Chamber, you know, so of course it's going to be memorable for some reasons. But what did you think about Elimination Chamber? Let me know in the comments below. Also, like the video. It helps get the video out there. And subscribe. Thank you once again for 700 subscribers. It means the world to me. Looking for 1,000 soon. So to be part of that, hit subscribe for more action figure setups, figure reviews, show reviews, and more. That's it from me. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments below, and I will catch you guys later.